Hey guys, let's go back to basics, shall we? This... is a quarter, a very shiny quarter. I'll try and get it out of the light. And this... is also a quarter that's been what they call colorized. And before anybody gets their uh, knickers in a bunch. You know, I find the older I get, the older um, the language I'm using. It's like, I'm, I'm, the other day I said I was pleased as punch about something. I didn't, you know, I don't know where this is all coming from. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's some, some mental aging that winds their language backwards. Anyway, these colorized quarters also have a sticker Um, that lets you know they're one of the colorized ones. Why? Well, let me start up the Danger Zone! And I'll explain. So, uh... So the way this game is... Well, first of all, um, because I have this coin pusher show now, I'm getting calls from people all over New York who have coin pushers. That, you know, um, they've been keeping in their basements or their game rooms, and I just, you know, didn't even know about it. Um, it's like there's some sort of secret underground coin pusher network that YouTube has brought out of the shadows. But that's fine. I've, I've, I've always in, enjoyed being in and out of the shadows. Anyway, the guy says, sends me a picture of the setup and says, you want to come over and play? And I say, sure. So I, I go on over, and it's actually really very clever um, way to uh, handle what amount to tiny towers. And uh, I said, wow, this, this is kind of cool. Um, how do you play? And he said, uh, is it just the ordinary way? And he said, well, yes and no. See, these are all colorized. What you do is you put in a colorized quarter... And, and uh, then you win when it comes out. I said, okay, that sounds good. And, you know, the more I get off, the more points I get. He said, oh, no, no, we're not playing for points. Um, not here. Um, I says, oh, well, how does it work? And he says, well, this cup has 40. You can count them if you want. I didn't bother. It looks like 40 to me. Um, maybe a little more even. That that this cup of forty will cost you eight hundred dollars, and I said eight hundred dollars. That, that's like twenty dollars a, a a coin. And he said yes, but every coin that you drop in and you manage to get all the way off pays you a hundred dollars. And I'm do some quick math and I um figure out. Well, I said well, so if I got them all off, I get. Four thousand dollars, and he said, "Yeah." So you're risking eight hundred. You get, you might get four thousand back. It's like I'm thinking, no, no, there's no way I'm going to get them all off on my best day. So that's you know, um, but I do love games. Now, do I love this game eight hundred worth? Yes, but well, no, but see, it's hard. Um, but I did say to myself, if I only get eight of them off then that's all I need to do, right? And I'm, I'm pretty sure I could get eight of them off, maybe. Um, and he said, look, how, but I, I'm still really iffy about it. I said, maybe 500? He said, no. Um, he says, how about this? If you don't manage to get them off, if you don't manage to get enough off for another $200, I'll give you like 25 regular quarters to try and get them off. And so you're saying, you want me to risk $1,000? He said, well, you know, if you win everything, you can still get 4000 or close to it. And uh, I'm like, uh, um, well, I can see that some are already falling off in the back, maybe. So uh, I figure, you know what? Gotta, this is a gambling game. Got to get my feet wet sometime. Okay. So I give him the 800 bucks. Um, I go across the street and get cash, though. I don't want him anywhere near my 
my cards or my info. Because, um, you know, sometimes you get a feeling. Anyway. Um. Oh, and any regular quarters I knock down are just regular quarters. But uh, is 40 enough? Well, we're going to find out here on the Danger Zone. Shall we go? What? Yes, we should? Good call. Okay. Some are tipping over already. That's a good sign. And uh, you can, guys can see them on the ones with the pictures on the way up or the ones with the stamps. Um, what the stickers, I mean. Um, oh, there's a couple. Ooh, that'll help. Okay. But still, remember, I have to find a way to get as many as I can of these things off from the very back where they're doing all the pushing right now. Um, off from the very back. Um, right off the front. And look, I'm already like half done. And nothing is happening. And uh, I'm starting to feel kind of stupid for thinking I could do this. Well, maybe not. We'll see. Question is, can I get any of the real quarters, or not the real quarters, but you know what I mean, the uh, ordinary quarters. Can I get them, uh, oop, that's starting to look good. Can I get them off the bottom and then, you know, flip things around So, uh, maybe I can knock some of the colored ones off. Sorry, colorize. I never know what to do. Should I dump a whole lot of them in at once? And get a big, see if I can get a big push? This is what I'm down to now in Colorize. I really don't want to have to pay the other 200 for only 25 more quarters. But... Oh, God. Wait. They don't have to move much farther. Oh, you can see this is a whole sort of uh, patriotic layout, and he's, um, his machine plays patriotic music, and um, that's fine. Right now, I want to concentrate on the game. So, uh, John, why don't you stop talking and play? I really only need one quarter to fall off the front. Okay. Oh, one fell. I did say one. No, I shouldn't have just said I need one quarter because obviously that wasn't enough. I need 200 quarters to fall off the back right now. God, nobody does what I say anymore. Anyway, this is my last quarter. Um, if you have any advice for me, you, you know, it's too late. This is not live, but okay. Nothing. Okay. I've got your other 200. Hold on a sec. You know, a lot of times when you're playing Coin Pusher, 
the words, I really should have known better, go through your head. But what's even worse is, I did know better. I did know I couldn't do it. And I went ahead anyway, just because the game looked cool. Okay, now I'm just using ordinary quarters. Whoop. I didn't even put one in, and one fell. Hmm. Okay. That's all I have. I don't know if he'll sell me anymore. Of course, it fell backwards. I don't know how well you can see this, but let me show you. You see that blue chip on the left with the red chip on top? It's hanging over the edge. And there's one on the right hanging over the edge. And yet nothing's falling. Ah. Okay, two more. Five quarters, ladies and gentlemen. I have five quarters. Oh, my... This hurts, guys. This this really hurts. Wait. Okay, two of these are chips. But I got four quarters back. Maybe this is the start of something. So, uh, went to my comedy class today. Yes, believe it or not, no matter how many times you've done it, you can always learn something new from a guy like Rick Crone. Um, and, uh, also, those of you who are even thinking of taking a comedy class, first of all, if you can get to New York City any way possible, want we'll to spend a week in New York anyway, Rick is the best comedy teacher in the country. There's no question. I've taken comedy from a lot of people because uh, 
Where, you know... Yes! Oh. Okay. That was a good push. And I'm going to have to grab the quarters out. Chips and quarters. Sorry, guys. Okay. Sorry, I got a little happy there. Um, still, by the way, just to be clear, I'm at a thousand bucks and I haven't won a dime because uh, I haven't knocked off any of the colors. But as long as I keep getting quarters back, I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, um, if you get to New York, you've got to take Rick's class. And you want to be in comedy, you got to take Rick's class. Teaches at all levels. And it's um, basically um, What he says to me is, John, you're doing well in comedy. But, you know, half of it is because you walk in here with a, you know, a pile of crap. And then you make me get out my shovel and shovel through it until I find the, the good stuff underneath. And I said, well, you know, that's true. And, you know, that's what I'm paying for a class for. He said, you have a, you've taken this class 47 times. That I, didn't, I stopped charging you 25 times ago. And I said... Um, well, you're right. Okay, I, that's what I don't pay you for. Um, but, uh, anyway, what's my point? Did I have a point? Anyway, other than Rick's class is the best class. Oh, yes. Um, he said, but the difference, John, between you and the people who are just starting out is when I start digging in your piles of crap, I know there's actually going to be a diamond on the other end. Okay, let's I'm not out of quarters yet, but let's uh, start cleaning out. Um, and I said, Rick, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. And he said, I said something nice? I take it back. Rick is actually a lovely man. Um, um, he does all styles of comedy. My style is kind of a cat skills, one liner kind of comedy. And uh, um, he said, okay, John, that's your in. You're gonna start like that. He said, he said, but you have to understand comedy isn't done that way anymore. And I said, Rick, doesn't that just mean it doesn't mean it won't work. It just means they'll think I made it up. And he said, well, that's a sick and accurate but really sickening thought. But okay. Anyway. Um, then now, what's a comedy class like? Um, people tend to think it's like a whole bunch of people sit around pulling jokes to each other. No. Um, comedy is very hard work. Um... It can take you half a day to come up with one functional joke. And then you don't even know for sure if an audience is really going to laugh at it. That's why I said functional, not necessarily a working joke. Um, and you get that out of Rick's class, too. Because he does a showcase at the end. Um, and... Uh, Um, so you're working very hard and you're paying very close attention and the students are all trying to help each other. Um, you know, they have a really good premise for a joke, but, um, what they came up with to, to make out of it, um, um, you know, like a premise would be something like, and I don't have a joke for this, what if on airlines... The peanuts ate the people. See, that's a premise. And you can like, run from that. And if anybody, hey, if anybody has a great joke from that that I can use, just leave it in the comments. So, uh, 
Um, you know, but, and sometimes they'll have a fantastic premise, but they will have a punchline, or sometimes you even have a punchline, like, uh, I'll, 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 I'll just randomly, how big did you say it was? Yep, and that's a punchline, but I don't have a joke in front of it, and we, whoa, and the teacher, Rick, says, now, here is what no one else will tell you about comedies these days. It didn't used to be true, but now it is. You want to meet a really smart, really pretty woman? Take a comedy class, just on that basis. Um, unless, of course, you don't like smart, pretty women. Now, I don't know how to judge the men. Most of the men in comedy are weird goofballs like me. Um, but the women are smart. Um, and some of them are gorgeous. Or And all of them are off limits to a married man like me um, and uh, my wife's um, plenty smart and plenty beautiful herself um, although uh, what I have to uh, <laughs> what I have to praise her most for is her tolerance for having a husband who does stand up and wants to run all his jokes by her a thousand times is this a little better is this a little better um Um, okay, I'm still at a thousand with nothing won. But, at least I think there's nothing won. See, I'm always afraid, under these kind of circumstances, that a colorized quarter will fall off, a hundred dollar quarter will fall off, and I, I won't notice, and I'll put it right back in. So I'm going to ask you guys... I don't know what you guys can do to help me from the future. Next time I do this kind of game, I'm going to do it live. So you can say, John! Just put a hundred bucks back in the machine. Um. But, oh. The quarters are coming now. The, it, it seems, at least right now, it seems like the extra 200 was worth it. So... Uh, my bank account's down a thousand. So. See, I'm really enjoying this game. Let me just put the, the money part aside. I really like this game. I think it's very clever to have it set up that you put the coins in so they're at the back and that they participate in uh, in a way with with the whole game. Give me a sec for clean out. Guys, if they play the Star Stangled Banner. You could just type in comments that you stood up and I'll believe you. And I'm already standing up, so that's not a problem. Um, anyway. But yeah, comedy class is a great deal of fun, but it's very hard work. Um, and I enjoy helping the other students. I can't tell you exactly what I said, but 
But I'll, uh, I don't, you know, people say, aren't you worried that you're helping your competition? And it's like, no. I mean, if they have it, they have it. They don't, they don't. And uh, people helped me a lot um, when I got into this ridiculous, sorry, into this soul deadening, sorry, into this um, really mind dumb, sorry, um, this particular industry where I get to be, make people laugh for a living. And you know what? Getting up there and making people laugh um, is nerve-wracking. But when they do laugh, and they don't always, let me tell you, um, um, when they do laugh, it's the best feeling on earth. It's addictive. Um, and, uh, the music stopped. Um, can you start the music stop? Is there a button or something that I can push? Um, he said, oh, he told me he turned it off because he thought it was getting on my nerves. No, he's wrong. I'll get him to turn it back on again. Hold on. I think he turned it off. Um, he sees I'm winning now. And uh, he wanted to break my concentration. It doesn't work that way with me. He's never been heckled. You know, I've actually... Well, to be honest, I've never been heckled. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if I should be insulted or whatever. I have been interrupted, but it's usually by people um, who, uh, you know, who aren't saying nasty things. Like at uh, one point, I said this thing where I, I start off this bit with saying, "So I went to my doctor today." Not that you care. Um, and someone shouted out, um, "So he said, so how are you?" Which I didn't feel like it was an attack, and I said, uh, yeah. How? He said, I'm doing okay. Can I finish this? And it was, I got a laugh, and it's fun. Um, oh! I uh, obviously don't want to, you know, give away my uh, really good stuff. You know, until I get my next click special, which I, I doubt I will get, but it seems to be handing them out like, uh, there's, you know, you can go to a baseball game and on, on Netflix special day and um, get your Netflix special. Okay, now is when I have to start being careful. I see that there's some uh, uh, mark coins coming up. Oh, this one right on the edge. So I'm going to have to be careful when I take this out. Okay. I'm actually cleaning out more often than I normally do. Because I want to... Aha! Okay. I got one. Um, okay, so that's something. Um, but if you don't mind, I'm going to wait like, wait to the end to count up. Just like always. But at least they're starting to come off. And I'm carefully storing them in a different cup so that uh, I don't just throw them back into the machine. Well, I'll just say I'm not anywhere near earning it, my money back. But I'm a little more optimistic than I was a bit ago. You know, I, I I noticed on the left there, there's a a, a bunch of uh, painted 
some quarters that are heading for the uh, dealer slots, which means I, I won't get them. Or as I call them, the, there, see, there they go. The dealer slots are taking my coins. Because they're just quarters like any other quarter, and they can go right down there too. Which, uh, um, you know, as part of the challenge, it's actually, while it's annoying right now, I think that's a clever part of the game that the, uh, um, the prizes can actually just fall into the back of the dealer. Anyone who tuned in for the AMS ASMR, you're welcome. That was a good that was a good push and a good fall. Um, I'm almost ready to clean out again even. Okay, right now I'm just gonna focus on getting that one colored quarter off the back field. Oh also I have to tell you. Um, that today's episode of Danger Zone was, uh, supported in part by the We Buy Gold pawn shop near 60th and 8th in Brooklyn, New York. It's great when Brooklyn supports their own. Um, and they are... I'm really the nicest, friendliest, most helpful uh, pawn shop ever. Um, you know, a, a kid found a um, a collection of uh, like three baseball cards, really rare ones. Um, he didn't even know what they were worth. He brought them in. And... Uh, They gave him $3,000 for him. Aha! One of them snuck in. Snuck into my quarter system and I didn't put it back in. I... I feel like a god, actually. But uh, it seems a relatively minor accomplishment. But... Okay. Um, they give him a thousand dollars for the three cards. Um, and uh, um, no. And hey, I gotta tell you, they didn't ask him where he found them. Didn't ask him any questions. Um, they didn't check with the police. See if anyone was reported a theft. Um, so, uh, the neighborhood trusts them, because, the, uh, you know, kids could have gotten the cards anywhere, but they didn't even ask. I mean, they're supposed to ask, but they don't. So, if you, uh, find anything, you feel like pawning, oh, look, all the, all of them are off the back. Um, I think, okay, um, if you find anything you want to pawn without any questions asked just go to the we buy gold raw new or old pawn shop 60th and 8th right between the laundry and the restaurant Okay, I think it, it's time for another clean-out. Sorry, the clean-outs are slow. It's just, I gotta make absolutely certain. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That I'm not uh, 
missing any of the colorized ones. So ordinarily I just, you know, shove the quarters. Um, and into a, you know, into here and start playing. But, uh, Um, uh huh. Uh huh. I think it's going to come down to how many uh, were eaten by the uh, Steelers hole. Um, uh-huh. Um, I'm throwing in some extra, uh-huh, so you can't just count them, uh-huh, to, uh, see how well I'm doing, but, um, I'm, um, uh, let me put this way, I'm not, a, um, as worried about, um, explaining all this to my wife as I was a few minutes ago. See, like, this is New York, so, uh, you know, if I, my wife notices we're down a couple hundred, I can say, uh, um, well, honey, I, I just, I had two more sandwiches than usual. Uh-huh. Two more sandwiches than usual, and they were a hundred bucks each, and, look, I'm exaggerating a little. But things have gotten really pricey in New York City, and that's um, mostly. Uh, I suppose it's mostly because the prices went up. I don't know. If I knew why they went up, I'd bring them down. Yeah. Okay. So. uh so how are the prices where you guys are? I mean... I mean, everything has gotten more expensive. It came down a little. I mean, it's sort of like it went up 50% and then came down 30%, and we're supposed to be all happy about that. But, you know... In, you know, I'm going to have to switch over to using uh, this because there's just too, much, too many quarters for the cup. So, uh, the other thing I mentioned this, I think in, I, may, I may or may not have mentioned this in a previous video. You all know my son's autistic. You're probably sick of hearing it by now. You're probably going, yes, John, he's autistic. We get it. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but, uh, that means... Um, since he's autistic beyond the point that any of the public schools can handle him, we have to put him in a private school that is able, was able to, we had to put him in a private school. I keep forgetting he's not a kid, he's 21. So he aged out at 21. And we go to collect on our last year. And suddenly... The um, Department of Education was fighting us tooth and nail, and they just settled. And it may just be that every new mayor wants to make his chops by saving money, and for some reason they pick on the special needs kids and their family. Anyway, we were supposed to have gotten paid 18 months ago. Um, um, but... Instead, really, it's interesting. This one's on the left and the right. Um, 
which is the hardest spots to get down, but we'll see. Um, you can see them, right? Over here and over here? Yeah, okay. Um, um, but uh, this past week, we finally got our money. Um, and remember, this isn't money we're winning in some sort of lottery. We had to front this money, and it, I'm talking a lot of money. Um, um, let me put it this way. You know how everyone's, um, it's upset about how much it costs for a year of college these days. I wish our in school cost what a year of college costs these days. But we finally got it back. And, uh, you know, we'd adjusted to life without it, so it's like sort of a surprise. I said to my wife, I know, I know what we're going to do with this money. And she said, uh, what, John? Because she's learned over the years that I'm capable of almost anything. And I said, let's put it in the bank. And she said, okay, I'm with you so far. What about that? Oh, oh well, we, why don't we invest it? And she said, okay, we can do that too. And uh, I'm all, huh. Um, um. It's nice to get the screaming, but I'm not asking anybody to think that suddenly getting a lot of money is, is in any way a bad thing. But you really don't want to be, you know, you have to understand that it's a one-time thing. It's not income. And it's good to have it, but my family for a Two generations now have uh, had uh, a very strong attitude. Maybe it's a middle class attitude, but I don't know what it is. That money is not um, for yachts or big fancy houses or expensive cars. Money, if you're lucky enough to get some, um, like for instance, it would be nice if the Amazon would, if I could, you know, you guys would uh, like and subscribe so that I could uh, get Amazon to monetize the account. Um, um, money is for investing and for rainy days. And that's it. And if you, you keep that attitude, and uh, I think if you keep that attitude, no matter your income, well, that's not, you know, that's so easy to say. When you're, when you have to hope they don't turn off the lights because you had to pay the water bill, or you hope they don't turn off the water. I put one back in. You see that in the back there, the 25? I put one back in. I know what you're thinking. Well, maybe, John, maybe if you didn't talk so much, you would have noticed what you were doing. And it's like, well, that's certainly true. But it's not going to happen. That's for certain. Um... Well, you know what? I only have that one left to get off. The others have all the others have either fallen down the front chute, or uh, they've either gone down the front chute or they've gone down the back chute. Um, I'm, um, 
Um, if that sounds dirty, I apologize. I didn't mean it that way. Now I'm tempted to punish myself by stopping and not getting that last one off, but you know what? My son went back to the same coin pusher three times, and each time said his mission was one thing, to get me this watch, and he did. So... You know, he's no quitter, and I can't be a quitter either. My son went to coin pushing yesterday and was ahead two bucks. So he took the money, went over to the vending machine and got himself some m and Good for him. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to do one last clean out because things are starting to fall on the floor. Now, this is a little embarrassing because I, I really did set up a system where I carefully go through every quarter to make sure I wouldn't throw one back in. And I still threw one back in. Um, Josh, it's not just you. You get so caught up in the uh, talking and throwing. Huh. I don't think that's an American coin. Oh, well, same size as a quarter. Well, I'll say, I will say that one of the things this uh, win it back, you know, drop it in and then get it back thing does, is it makes you go through the quarters, even when otherwise you wouldn't really need to. I mean, I have plenty of quarters, it's just I have to go through them very carefully now.
Oops, one almost got by me again. I didn't put it in, but I almost got uh, I almost put it in the sort out in the uh, wrong sort out bin. You guys really don't know what we coin pusher video maker people go through just to provide you with an interesting, we hope, and exciting, we hope game. Yep, another one, but didn't get through. Ha! Okay, I still need people to comment on whether on a video like this they want me to leave in they want me to leave in all these count outs or countdowns, or count ups, or whatever the heck it is, clean up. Whether they want me to leave them all in, because it's part of the game, because it's nice music playing, and ah, see that one is uh, it's a uh, colored side up now, colorized side up. Um. Hey, I have an idea. I could throw one of the colored ones in on purpose just to make this thing even longer. But no, even I have to go to bed sometime. Because I got to tell you right now, daylight saving time is kicking my butt. I caught another one in my, I was about to throw it in, but they feel just a little different and my finger caught it this time. Okay, I'm just going to use my sun technique of simply loading up all three holes. Again, I didn't mean that to sound dirty either. Now I had a friend who thought everything I said sounded dirty. So I would just say things to her like, um, I was just reading a, an interesting article about, about a buffalo stampede, or, you know, back in the old times. And she'd say, John, when, I don't know, but when you say it, it sounds dirty. Big push. Okay, not big enough. 
Um, it's like... He said, I think it's because I know you're trying not to say something dirty. It's like... And I said, Lucien. When have I ever tried not to say something dirty? He said, okay, that's a good point. But anyway, she should appreciate my effort, right? She's that sensitive. I think one or two more should do it. But I've been wrong before. As long as I don't put another one in. You know what, guys? If I put another one in, it's on me. I'm just going to eat it. But I have to say I'm... Huh. It's down. Okay. And here it is. But just in case I'm going to clean out the rest of it. Take only a second. Okay, you know what? I'm going to stop it this time and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Everyone ready for the countdown? Countdown, count Dracula. Count Lipschitz. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to put this right here. But, you know, it does look good, doesn't it? One, two, one hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand. Okay, so that's my that's my buy-in back. Let me put that in a separate little cup here. Because everything else. I won. Okay. Haha. <laughs> 100, 200, 300. Four hundred, five hundred, six hundred. Seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred. A thousand. Eleven hundred. Twelve. This is the you know, I don't mind it when a quarter gets in with the others. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. 24, 25, $2,500 I won. Now, uh, I'll be right back after I have a little, little chat with my gambling friend. Okay, so, of course, the guy who insisted I gamble, I go up to him and say, hey, you know, you owe me a lot of money. 
And he said, well, don't forget, you, you already paid me a thousand. And I said, yeah, but uh, you owe me 2200 And he said, hey, well, you know, when you came in, I'll give you back your thousand. How about that? Because when you came in, you said you just wanted to play. And I said, you said it was a gambling game and you wanted to gamble. And uh, he said, okay, okay. And he gave me my money. Um, but, he, you know, he said I should never have uh, sold you that uh, second cup of quarters. And, then, and I said, you know, you're probably right. You probably shouldn't have. But it was your idea. So, you know, I'm still not a gambling man. I'm just going to donate this money. I'm probably give it to my son's old school or any research facility that's working on ways to help autistic people. Or, you know, maybe I'll just put it in my son's account and use it uh, to pay for his art lessons and his music lessons and um, his gym membership and his ninja obstacle course lesson. And I'm not making that up, just like American Ninja lessons. And um, um, this, you know, this kid is the exact opposite of me. I can't stop talking. He can barely talk. Um, I am way out of shape, always have been. He has been working his muscles since the day he was born. And um, he's a musician. I'm not much for music in the first place. But uh, um, so I'm just going to leave you with please like and subscribe. It's really, it's not going to, it won't, it won't, uh, what did my mother use? You know, as long as I'm using older expressions, you know. Clicking like won't raise a blister. Um, you know, I'm going to run out of these. I'm going to have to look up some old expressions. Um, and uh, drop by uh, um, We Buy Gold. Because, um, uh, really, um, they help me keep going. Um, you know, because even I have things to do. That, you know, I have to earn, I have to earn a living on top of everything else. So, uh, I think that's about it for tonight, um, and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.